Welcome to the ATA Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Baird. Each month on the podcast, we bring you news and insights from the American Translators Association. We look at what's happening at ATA, explore the benefits of membership, and discuss the translation and interpreting professions. You know, the T&I industry is changing rapidly. We hope this podcast will help you keep up with it. ATA was founded over 60 years ago to advance the translation and interpreting professions and foster the professional development of individual translators and interpreters. We have nearly 10,000 members in some 100 countries. If you'd like to know more about ATA, we'll have some information for you at the end of the show. You'll also find links in the notes. All right, let's start off with a few quick announcements. Hey, ATA members. ATA will hold its regularly scheduled elections at our upcoming 63rd annual conference in Los Angeles. Four directors will be elected. If you are not yet a voting member, it's very easy to become one. You do not need to be an ATA certified member. Any ATA associate member may apply for voting membership. Just complete the ATA Active Membership Review application. It's free and only takes a minute. Find a link in today's show notes. But listen up, you need to submit your application no later than September 22nd. Otherwise, you won't be eligible to vote this year. That's September 22nd, so don't delay. By the way, the next episode of the ATA podcast will feature interviews with our 11 candidates, so stay tuned for that. In other news, the ATA Board of Directors' latest meeting was in August in Chicago, Illinois. The board meets four times a year to establish policy, develop goals and objectives, and oversee ATA finances. A summary of each meeting, which outlines the actions, discussions, and ongoing committee work, is posted in the members-only area of the ATA website. The August summary is now available. Just log in and look for the link. And finally, be sure to check out ATA's webinar program for our super back-to-school September month. Choose from seven webinars and two workshops. ATA members get a 25% discount on registration to all ATA webinars. The September Back to School offer includes ATA's Back to Business Basics webinar on getting out of a business slump, which is free to ATA members. If you'd like more information on any of these announcements, look for links in this episode's notes. Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're talking about ATA's 63rd Annual Conference, which will be in Los Angeles, California, October 12th to 15th. And I'm so excited to have Veronica Demichelis on the podcast today. You know, I've known her for years, and she's been a huge advocate of the podcast and has played an active role behind the scenes over the years. In fact, she led the Professional Development Committee's efforts to launch our Inside Specialization series, and we've released 13 episodes so far since April 2021. Veronica currently serves as ATA President-Elect and Chair of the Governance and Communications Committee. As ATA President-Elect, one of her roles is Conference Organizer. Now, over the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to ask Veronica to give us some insights into what we can expect, as well as some tips to help us prepare. And as a bonus, she's going to share how you can get your hands on tips from the locals, our friends and colleagues at the Northern California Translators Association and the Association of Translators and Interpreters in in the San Diego area. Veronica, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for the invite, Matt, and thank you so much for all your work on the ATA podcast. Thank you. It's really great to have you on the show. So let's get right into it. ATA 63 is, you know, really right around the corner. As we record today, it's just over a month away. So I wanted to start with asking you, what are you looking forward to the most? Oh my gosh, Um, everything, (laughs) but definitely the in-person vibe, the in-person conference experience. You know, we've had a couple of uh, very strange years um, in terms of, you know, just life in general, business and ATA conferences. Um, And the connections, the energy and the joy you get uh, out of being at an in-person conference, um, that feeling of being around your kind of people, your community, uh, this is what keeps people coming back. 
back to ATA conferences year after year. And it's what we all missed for the last couple of years, uh, first having a virtual uh, conference experience and then a hybrid one. So this will be our first in-person conference since um, the last in-person annual conference in 2019 in Palm Springs. And this is just a, such a perfect setting. LA is an amazing, vibrant city with so much to see, fantastic food. Uh, so we really couldn't wish for a better location to celebrate our reunion. And that's how an ATA conference feels like. And, you know, when you run your own business, you are just so focused on the day-to-day -day operations and the needs of your clients and your actual work that it can be hard to find time for professional development and networking. And so I feel like um, the ATA conference and um, ATA 63 this year is just like a business retreat of, of sorts, a chance to dive deep into learning, growing your business, making meaningful connections. Uh, looking at the bigger picture of, um, you know, our profession and your uh, career and your work, and you just leave feeling energized and inspired. So that's what I look forward to the most. And it's all coming together, thanks to the hard work of many, many, many ATA volunteers and staff. And I would just like to take a moment and thank them for all their efforts in working on this year's conference. Well, I'm going to have to second that thank you. And I am just as excited as you are. I can hear it in your voice and <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> the The early bird registration deadline is also coming up pretty quick. Um, yeah. Can you tell us when that is and how much can members actually save if they register early? Yeah, so we have uh, discounted rates available if you register by September 16th. Um, and, um, you know, it's it's really coming up uh, quickly. You register a, signi a significant amount of money if you register at the early uh, registration rate and not wait until uh, later. And first time attendees this year, as well as new or renewing members can save as well. Oh, really? H how so? So this year we have um, uh, decided to offer a first time attendee discount. So for people who have never been at an AT annual conference, um, they can save $75 off of, re of their registration rate and um, has been very popular so far. We have many, many attendees who use that um, offer and renewing or new members can save if they join ATA uh, or renew their membership and register for the conference at the same time and they can save up to $300. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, well, so listeners, hello. That means if you know someone who has never attended or who is, say, on the fence about joining ATA, mm -hmm. you might want to share that little detail with them. Yeah. Now, the annual conference has both an educational and a networking component. And I understand that there are some exciting new stuff uh, this year, especially on the networking side of things. But let's talk continuing education first. What does ATA 63 have on offer? Wow. Yeah, it's always um, it, it's always a, a really fun and rewarding challenge, I think, for conference organizers to uh, to decide on uh, the um, conference schedule and uh, the educational component. We have 168 conference sessions this year and 16 um, AST day courses. These are advanced skills and training courses we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, and we have 30 conference tracks, that's three zeros, and that's a lot for a conference. Um, they're all language and subject matter related. And we also have distinguished speakers that are invited by various ATA divisions. So there's really a lot to choose from. Um, and for those who are uh, really interested in continuing education credits, we will be, of course, offering uh, them both for ATA certified translators and credentialed interpreters. Um, and for interpreters, we're currently in the process of getting approval from various courts and medical interpreting credential organizations. But, you know, um, uh, California, where we are going to be, that's a hub for all things related to film and localization. So of course, we'll have quite a few um, interesting sessions on audiovisual translation, subtitling, interpreting, making sure we um, have enough on offer on uh, both uh, interpreting uh, methodology and also tools for remote interpreting, in-person interpreting, and so on. Uh, lots of great topics for independent contractors, uh, business-related topics, 
Um, and, you know, the usual legal, medical, science and technology, uh, TNI industry related sessions, everything that's new and relevant for um, our fields, you'll find it at AT63 this year. And we also have some unique and fascinating sessions this year, like uh, the distinguished speakers invited by the AT Advocacy Committee are representatives of Cielo. It's an indigenous women led uh, intergenerational organization that is working towards combating racism towards ind indigenous people. And they will present two sessions on Indigenous interpreting as an act of empowerment. So I'm really looking forward to those. And another highlights, we'll have um, sessions on inclusive language in translation and interpreting, the role of translators and interpreters in public education, uh, working with machine translation tools beyond post editing, managing subtitling projects, and more. I mean, 168 sessions in three days. We all have some serious prioritizing to do. Uh, plus, of course, the 16 advanced skills and training courses on Wednesday, October 12th. Wow, 30 tracks, some yeah. some very unique uh, sessions. Um, wow, sounds like it's going to be a really interesting and packed and prioritizing. Yes, that's going yeah. to be key. Always a problem for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you mentioned advanced skills and training day, mm -hmm. ST day. I mean, it sounds pretty self-explanatory, but maybe you can briefly explain, you know, what sort of this, you know, pre-conference day is all about. Right. So uh, AST Day is our conference before the conference of sorts. Uh, it's a day, um, it's Wednesday typically, and it's a day when you can sign up for specialized training. Uh, there are uh, three hour intensive workshops offered with incredibly skilled instructors, all very experienced in their fields, very much in demand. Uh, popular instructors. Um, and these courses come at additional fees, but they're very much worth it because um, think workshops rather than uh, presentations. So you get that interact interaction, a lot of dialogue and engagement with instructors, some hands-on activities. And of course, you get continuing education credits for the AST uh, workshops as well. Um, and uh, this year we have some fantastic uh, instructors and topics. Uh, we'll have, uh, for example, the uh, very interesting one that's on uh, keyword localization, how to research and select keywords for international search and in optimization with Marion Rhodes. Uh, we'll have uh, one on uh, working in sustainability as a translator. Um, it's called People, Planet and Profit, translating the triple bottom line. Uh, it's with Abigail Dahlberg. And of course, we'll have some of uh, the most um, in-demand speakers like Jay Marciano, who will talk about artificial intelligence and neural networks for translators and interpreters, and Corinne McKay, who will teach a workshop on uh, direct client marketing for people who think they can't. Uh, we'll have some on-site translation skills with Catherine Allen and so on. So really a lot of great workshops to choose from. And of course, we'll have two workshops to help people prepare for the English into Spanish and Spanish into English ATA certification exam. We'll have two exam sittings at the conference. So for those who want to prepare for those, uh, we'll have AST courses as well on Wednesday. Yeah, I think workshop is definitely the key word there. Um, yeah. it, these, you know, I've attended several, um, uh, quite a few actually, uh, AST sessions over the years, and they are really hands on. I mean, you're not yeah. going to be just uh, getting a presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always get a lot out of them, and I think they're well worth the extra time. Yeah, I agree. Let's turn now to the networking component. Many of us are really looking forward to this part. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned earlier, for obvious reasons, you know, to uniting with old friends and meeting new ones, and some of us maybe even more than the educational sessions. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, you wrote in the July August edition of the ATA Chronicle that, quote, our big reunion in, in LA wouldn't be complete without networking events. So, tell us what's in store for us at this year's big reunion. Oh my gosh, so much uh, because we are uh, meeting, you know, fully in person again. Uh, 
you can literally network your way from breakfast through dinner. <laughs> There's no lack of networking opportunities at this year's conference. We have uh, some favorites like Buddies Welcome Newbies, where those new to the ATA conference can get tips and get paired with experienced conference goers. We'll have our welcome celebration that everyone uh, is always looking forward to. We'll have food, drinks, uh, lots of opportunities for conversations with uh, new people and those who you have seen before. We'll have tables for divisions. You'll uh, meet the board members and the candidates uh, in this year's election. And we'll have a selfie station at the welcome celebration with lots of fun photo props. So you can take group photos with friends and colleagues and also social media selfies. And you can use the hashtag ATA63. Uh, we'll have the Stronger Together Networking event where you can share business ideas and connect with colleagues to collaborate in the future. Um, we'll also have brainstorm networking uh, where you rotate through small teams working on scenarios that are all business related challenges and sticky situations that we all come across from time to time uh, speed networking uh, which is really fast paced and fun networking event and thank you matt for being the host for this one uh, we'll hope we'll have our job fair where you can meet companies that are looking for freelancers uh, please bring your cvs your business cards so you can find out about opportunities for freelancers at various companies and you can also find them on our conference app which is also back this year uh, we'll have the exhibit hall where you can visit different booths talk to uh, ex Exhibitors discover new tools, resources, and uh, find out what they offer. And of course, breakfast is a is a really um, uh, cool networking opportunity as well. You can just you know talk to people who are there at the conference, um, but also uh, find one of the designated tables where you can chat to board members or find out more about the election candidates this year. There's a student breakfast meetup. There's a tweet up where Twitter lovers gather and have breakfast and tweets together uh, and lots of other uh, cool breakfast tables. And then we'll have our fun events uh, like after hours cafe, um, the closing reception, the AFT game night and the conference dance party. And of course, um, you know, one of the uh, big networking opportunities is to just talk to people in the hallways in between sessions or during breaks. We even schedule long breaks between sessions for that reason to allow for this kind of impromptu networking to take place. And the conference hotel is fabulous. There's so many places there for, for you to meet with people in smaller or larger groups and, uh, and talk. Yeah. That sounds absolutely packed, just like the educational <laughs> sessions, yeah. you know, as always. But we mentioned some new things, and I yeah. believe you haven't mentioned those yet. So tell us what's new this year. Right. Yeah. So we wanted to add some some fun new stuff to the conference schedule. Um, and um, some of the examples are, for, you know, we've always had the book fair or we had the book fair for quite a while, except for, uh, of course, the COVID <laughs> conferences. But uh, this year we're bringing the book fair back and we're adding uh, podcasts and blogs to the book, uh, to the book fair. So now it's called book podcast and blog fair. And you can find, um, you know, what books have been published by uh, colleagues or also double as authors you can purchase signed copies but also um, there'll be a table for tni podcasts and blogs that are created and produced by translators and interpreters and you can come learn about uh, various podcasts and blogs that could be helpful uh, to you we'll also have um, the dictionary exchange and uh, where you can uh, donate the dictionaries you no longer need um, and also pick up the ones that you uh, could put to good use. And there'll be an additional table there for our new leave a book, take a book event. So if you brought, you know, a novel or a nonfiction or anything that's not a dictionary, but you feel like you would be happy to pass it on to a colleague, you can leave it there and you can uh, maybe find some books there that somebody else left and you can enjoy them. Um, we'll also have um, a, an MT, MTPE breakfast club. So that's a breakfast event uh, organized and hosted by the ATA Language Technology Division. They'll have a few tables there um, uh, during uh, breakfast on um, Thursday and Saturday, I believe. Um, so they'll um, have this opportunity for people to chat during breakfast to talk about machine translation post editing standards, how, um, you know, what people see in terms of flaws and what's not working or what is working when it comes to machine translation and post editing and how um, MTP has imp impacted people's business and so on. So uh, that should be a really interesting event as well. And another breakfast meetup that's new this year is one for sleep deprived parents. So, <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> uh, many of our colleagues, myself included, and you as well as a parent, uh, you know, we we juggle different roles. We're business owners and parents, and it can be really challenging. So we organized uh, this meetup this year for people to have an opportunity to talk about the joys and challenges of being a freelancer and a parent. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm really I'm gonna have to go to that one. That yeah. one's good. <laughs> some 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 support, a support group. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. So lots of uh, you know, fun learning and networking opportunities this year. We hope that people enjoy the new offerings too. And it's all in person only. So you really have to be strategic uh, and prioritize where you go. Yeah, I, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the in-person aspect, you know, it was mentioned uh, earlier, yeah. but um, that, you know, we had the fully hybrid or the fully online conference, virtual mm -hmm. conference and the hybrid yeah. last year. Um, can you tell our listeners why uh, ATA isn't hosting a hybrid conference this year? Yeah, so this this was a hard decision, um, and the board has discussed it at length. Um, the reality is that the fully hybrid conference comes at a huge cost. It's essentially, um, you know, us having to plan and um, and uh, complete two full conferences, one in person and one virtual. They're just running in parallel, so that would just increase the cost for us dramatically. It's really almost double the cost, and we may not even cover the full cost, especially in a city like. Which is really expensive. Things cost a lot more to begin with. Um, and while a hybrid event is convenient for attendees, we completely understand that. And appear, it probably appears relatively simple, simple to attendees. But on the back end, it's uh, there's a lot of details. It's it's really um, a, a lot of technology involved, a lot of people involved into running this, and it's just really expensive. Um, and that would mean an increase in conference registration fees. So we didn't want to do that. We thought the in-person experience is something we all um, are looking forward to after um, after the last couple of years. So, yeah, definitely. And I remember in Minneapolis, just the size of the of the um, the staff. Yeah, that was you know there was a staffer. For for those of you that only attended virtually last year, there was a staffer, not ATA staff. This was the mm -hmm. the, the contractors, the, the contractors yeah. in every room at every right. conference uh, in every session. And mm -hmm. if you think of just the overhead costs behind that of having oh, yeah. that kind of ma extra manpower at the at the at the conference, I can only imagine exactly um, how yeah. much that costs. Yeah. Now, uh, health and safety is, of course, a concern for many conference goers nowadays. Right. Uh, what can we yeah. expect in LA at the hotel? Uh, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this is a tough one um, for all of us, because we just had a couple of really nerve wracking years. And um, it's especially for those of us who have had COVID, and we all know how, how it feels. And we want to be safe. And as a conference organizer, I want people to feel safe and to have a great memorable event where they feel safe and taken care of. And uh, we are walking a fine line between making people comfortable and making them nervous. Um, we all have different comfort levels when it comes to traveling and attending large events. I can say that our goal is to make sure everyone is safe and healthy. We want our attendees to be informed of the steps we are taking. We want them to know what's going on at a conference. So we will include health and safety information in the FAQ section on the website and the conference app, which will be available a um, couple of weeks before the conference. We will also be sending out daily conference briefs to all attendees, and they will include important health and safety reminders and protocols. You know, what happens if you do get sick? How do you get tested? where the nearest locations. Um, and we continue to maintain a dialogue with the conference hotel, uh, Westin Bond Venture, and our conference planning partner, Merits, to stay on top of the latest health and safety information. Um, we will follow the guidance of the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the, uh, most importantly, the Los Angeles County Health Department. So um, you'll find the links to their website uh, on the conference website. You'll see what the latest guidance is when it comes to large events. And uh, we are committed to keeping you safe at 8863. And of course, uh, we'll share updates if any of the local requirements change. All right. Now, at the beginning of the show, we promised listeners some tips, and I think now would be a good time to offer them. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you recommend uh, to help us prepare for the conference and make the most of our experience? 
Well, the conference can be a really fun but very overwhelming experience. And uh, here I speak from personal experience of myself attending my first ATA conference. There's just so much to choose from and you really want to, you know, your first reaction is I want to do everything. I want to be everywhere. Uh, but it's best to plan and organize yourselves, review the schedule of sessions, um, events, prioritize what's important for you and your business. Uh, short term and long term, um, what people, you know, who would you like to meet? Uh, add the events that you're interested in uh, to your calendar so you see how your schedule looks like. And with the conference app, which will come out about two weeks before the conference, you can create your own agenda um, and it'll send you reminders, you know, when the next session is about to start or the next event is about to start. Um, another thing to do is to update your marketing materials, especially if you're actively looking for work, make sure you bring updated resumes, business cards uh, to the conference, update your ATA profile, uh, your LinkedIn profile or your website so that, you know, when you meet new people, they can actually uh, find the, the best way to contact you, your up-to-date information, and you really put your best foot forward when you make those connections. Um, and you can also update your profile and contact information in the conference app so people can contact you through the app as well. Um, everyone's schedule gets very busy during the conference. So if you're dying to meet someone at ATA 63, I suggest you reach out to them now and find time to meet. And really don't overbook yourself. Uh, again, speaking from experience here, <laughs> leave some room for um, some impromptu encounters, conversations in the hallways, just time to explore the city, take breaks so that you're rested uh, and can really enjoy the conference experience. And um, also, I would really encourage everyone to take the opportunity to have their professional headshots done at the conference. We'll have a professional photographer um, at our exhibit hall, and you can book time there and just walk out of the conference, not only uh, you know, with uh, lots of experience and learnings and having met new people, but also up-to-date professional pictures done. And just have fun. That would be my main advice. Speaking of fun, yeah. what about tips for enjoying LA and sunny Southern California? There's so much to do and see. Um, and I'm not from California myself. I'm from Texas, but I, you know, having visited the conference site, there, there is a lot there uh, in, within walking distance from the hotel and, um, you know, just so much uh, around uh, LA area. And thankfully, we have our amazing hosts, uh, NCTA and ATISDA, the Northern California Translators Association and Association of Translators and Interpreters in the San Diego area. And they created a wiki page with tips for nearby restaurants and activities to do. You can find it on the conference website. And if you're local yourself and you're attending, you can also send an email to uh, NCTA and ATISDA and recommend places to be added to that wiki page. It's uh, meant to be, um, you know, collaborative effort. And these local groups will also be ready to help people on site um, at our hospitality tables. And I also recently listened to the podcast of the AT Chinese Language Division, um, and they recent, uh, recently interviewed um, Ben Carl, who is an ATA board member and member of CLD, um, and he is an LA area resident. So he shared some great tips for people who have never been to LA or, you know, who want to explore the city. So i uh, really encourage people to listen to that too. That's great advice there. Good tip. And we'll definitely put that wiki, a link to that wiki mm -hmm. on in the show yeah. notes for, for everybody. Right. Well, Veronica, that about wraps it up for me. Do you have anything else you'd like to share today with our listeners? Well, just a reminder, don't forget to register by September 16th so that you can enjoy that uh, early registration rate. Uh, and book your room at the conference hotel and prepare to have lots of fun in LA. I'll see you there. Right on. Veronica, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And, you know, thank you for all the work you've put into planning this year's annual conference. Thank you, Matt. All right. That's a wrap. I'd like to thank everyone who helped produce the show today. Derek Platts mixed and edited the audio and Mary David and Rashawn Pacquerel at ATA headquarters provided editorial and technical support. If you learned anything new in today's podcast, I bet there's someone out there who would like to know it too. Don't be stingy. Tell them about the podcast. I've gotten to know so many great podcasts that way. I promise they'll thank you for it. And if you're not an ATA member, listen up. I've been a member for over 20 years. Joining ATA literally launched my freelance career and I've never looked back. Nowadays, the demand for translators and interpreters is at an all time high but finding quality work isn't easy. ATA membership can make the difference. 
And ATA isn't just for translators and interpreters. Individuals, companies, and organizations can join. We have teachers and professors, hospital administrators, language company owners, technology developers, as well as language companies, universities, hospitals, and government agencies. If you'd like to know more, go to ATA's website, atanet.org. You can also check out past episodes of this podcast where we talk about the benefits of membership and what's currently happening in the association. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Talk to you again soon.